Hey there, we just released this CMS 3D slider clonable and I want to run you through how it works and the code for it so that you can uh, customize it for your liking. So this is a swiper slider and it uses a few different tricks. One of them is the creative effect to make this 3D perspective, but we also have blurring on the sides. We have navigation by just hovering on this. We can also navigate by grabbing and uh, sliding around. We can navigate using the dots or even using the arrows. And if you look at the URL at the top over here, you will notice that whenever I change slide, it also updates the slide number. So you can send someone this URL and if you refresh or you, if you just open that URL, it will land on that specific slide. Let's jump into Webflow and see how this is built. At first glance, this doesn't look very great, um, but uh, we just need to keep uh, everything clean for Swiper to do its thing. Otherwise, uh, when you have like a grid or flex on top, it could break things. So the things that we that are important to us are this slider wrapper and everything that's inside it. Everything else is just a simple layout. We don't we're not going to go into detail on how that part is built. Inside the slider wrapper, we have the swiper component. We have the two arrows and we have the pagination div. So this is just an empty div with this class and swiper as the dots later on. These dots are styled with an embed that has CSS in it because we cannot directly access the elements in here. But the arrows, you can just uh, style them however you want. Yeah, I just have a base class called slider arrow and then uh, CC next and priv for uh, the variations of left and right. And they have a SVG icon inside of them. The swiper component is just the parent of the whole slider and if you're using cms swiper here would be the collection wrapper so you just have to give it this class of swiper then the collection list needs to have the class swiper wrapper and the collection item will need to have the class swiper slide these three classes are important but the others are customizable so you can change them uh, I'll, I'll show you in the code where you can put your customized classes later on. Inside the slide, we just have uh, an image over here. And then we have this uh, content, uh, or we call it gradient because there's a gradient on it to fade uh, from black so that the title is visible. And the uh, slide content here is set to mean height 0%. And when we hover, we will set this to 100 and this will fill up the whole card. Uh, and that's how the hover animation works. Uh, the code for that animation is in the CSS embed. So if I open this, here we have some uh, basic styles. We have the swiper pagination, just setting it uh, to go to the bottom a little bit. And then we have blurring on every slide background uh, which we then override on the active slide. We also have the active slides being visible or the content of these slides. We also unblur the next and the previous slides. And we also do the same for the, their backgrounds. So we set the proper properties over here. Then we have some styles for the bullets or the navigation dots. I'm not gonna go too much into detail into these. It's just border radius with height, uh, background and opacity. So nothing too interesting or too complicated. And here on hover, we set the slide content to uh, min height 100%. And this just animates it to full height. And we also set the gradient to have the background color of gold. So you can edit this to whatever color you want. Now let's go to the actual swiper code, which is up here in the page settings. So if I slide down, we have the CSS of swiper. We have the script and then we start the code over here. The first thing we do here is grab all the slides and we give them the attribute data hash slide and then a number. 
and this is how Swiper will know which slide to show depending on the hash. Uh, so this just tells it exactly what hash to put in the uh, URL. And then we initialize the slider or the Swiper with uh, the grabbing cursor. So whenever you hover, there will be the grab cursor on. We have sl five slides per view. We have center slides, loop. We have the speed set at 600. Effect creative helps us make the 3D perspective. Hash navigation is the one that changes the URL. A watch state makes it so that it even listens for uh, back events. So if I try to go back, it will animate the slide. So this makes it nice when you just want to go back uh, using the history. And then we have the navigation uh, options where we have the next element, the previous element. So if you want your arrows to have a different class, you can edit them from here, or it might not even be a class. Maybe it's uh, an ID or an attribute. You can set those from here. Same thing goes for the pagination. So you can change the class of your pagination div over here. And we also set clickable to true to make sure we can click on it to navigate to different slides. For the creative effect options, we have limit progress to two. And then for the previous one, we set these uh, properties. So translate X, Y, and Z. And the same thing for the next, but on the other side. After that, we can move on to the hover area. So first we grab the two areas that are uh, gonna be the hover areas. And we set the hover change delay to uh, 1000. So this is in milliseconds. So every one second that you hover on one side, it will change to the next slide. Uh, then we just define some uh, functions for uh, sliding to the previous uh, slide and then to the next one. And we will use these to set an interval that runs every one second when we hover. Uh, we need to uh, save those intervals somewhere so that we can clear them out when we are not hovering. So we first create the variables and then on mouse over on both elements. So this is the same thing, but we just used a different uh, function. So on mouse over, we set the interval ID to set interval. We add the function, which is uh, this function up here. And then the hover delay. So how often we want this interval to run. And then we do the same thing with uh, uh, interval ID 2. So we set another interval for the hover and we have the same logic. After that on mouse leave, we just clear the interval so that it doesn't keep running after we stop hovering. And then that's it. There is not much more into it. Once you set those and you have your slides um, and if you followed all the steps, then you should have this working example that we have. If you enjoyed this and you want more clonables from us, let us know in the comments so that we can produce more of them. And if you have any feedback, make sure to let us know so that we can improve our videos in the future.